We are live nationwide, worldwide. What's going on, fellas? Here with 12 Volt Talk, Big D and High Five Vega. Yo, what's up, fellas? We're checking the audio real quick before we get started. You guys who are in the chat room, let us know what you hear. Is the quality sounding good or is it sounding real good? Because we know it ain't sounding bad. Yeah, it sounded great, maybe, except be, our voices. Be truthful. To the fact. Let's see what they say. Good. Say I got one. That's all we need. All right. I'm going to yeah. share the screen here, brother V. And then I'm going to mute myself. It's all yours. All right. Here we go. Five, four, three, two. Welcome to 12 Volt Talk. Episode 29, Budget or Baller Car Audio. I'm one of your hosts, High Five Vega. You can find me at youtube.com slash high five vega. Joined, as always, by my good buddy, Derek. What's up, D? What's up, guys? Big D used to be another name. Just call me Derek now from Williston Audio Labs. You can find me at willistonaudio.com, which currently forwards you to a YouTube channel. And you can see my YouTube videos there. But in the future, who knows where it will take you? I don't know. But it'll take you somewhere interesting. Make sure you show up. <laughs> we have an exciting night here because we are getting ready to start. We have Steve Mead in the chat room. He is talking with our people in the chat room. So you guys in the chat room, make sure you tell him he needs to come on here and be one of our guests because we're ready to interview him. Right, Rob? Oh, yeah, for sure, man. I mean, I know B, he, Meat's a pretty tough guy. It's it's a good thing it ain't in a person, you know, because we mess up, you might might tighten us up. Yeah, no, it's all good. <laughs> we got it. So we have an interesting topic tonight. At least I think it's interesting. Something highly debated in the car audio industry. I call it budget or baller car audio. And I've already had some comments about some of the brands I put as baller, but we'll get to that later. Because I've got my own reasons why I call some people baller, some people budget. But yeah. before we get started with that, we want to talk real quick about our YouTube channel here that you're watching this. Make sure you subscribe below, youtube.com slash 12vtalk. Subscribe to us there. It helps us out. Also, if you're listening to this on a podcast network, make sure you go over to YouTube and subscribe to our YouTube channel because you can see our beautiful faces here live worldwide yeah. once a week. And if you're listening on audio, go ahead and leave us a review. Like you said, we got 67. We're just, you know, eight reviews away. Never another giveaway. Another giveaway for the people. And who doesn't like a giveaway? Everybody wants something for free. Yeah, man. Free stuff's the best stuff. It is. I might have to win myself so I can give it away and give it back. <laughs> no, nah, I would never do. I would never do such a thing. So first off, we're going to talk about budget car audio. And Rob and myself, Rob and me, yeah, Rob and me, been around for a while. And we started off in car audio and, you know, we had to dig out whatever we had in our pocket to go buy speakers and subwoofers and amplifiers and mow grasses and do all kind of things. So most people or a lot of people in car audio start with the budget stuff. Nothing wrong with starting with budget, right, Rob? Yeah, I mean, I still rock the budget stuff, truth be told. <laughs> hey, there's nothing wrong with that because that's one of the reasons why I like to test as many budget products as, as I can. Give us an idea of what's the good budget, what's the maybe not so good. So if you're on the budget side of car audio, it's very easy to find stuff online. Amazon, of course, everybody knows about Amazon, eBay, all kind of places you can go where you can buy stuff for cheap. Now, kind of similar to what we talked about last week about the dealer versus the non-dealer. If you're going to go the cheap route, then you have to be prepared to DIY. The good thing about times these days is all you got to do is do a search on YouTube. You can figure out how to install an app, how to build a subwoofer box how to put your head unit in, pretty much everything you want to do is right there online. So it's a perfect time to be a budget baller. Yeah, especially with, you know, 
guys like you and and um ryan testing all these budget amps you can know exactly what they're going to do or within a range you know not every amp's going to be exactly the same but that's a big leg up on on what we used to do it's true because in the past like rob just mentioned we had to rely on magazines you know we waited every month to get a magazine and open it up to see what did brand a versus brand b do well nowadays we have so many people out there with amp dynos and amm ones and term labs and things like that where they're getting actual real numbers you can do a lot of research before you buy a product to see what it's all about and it goes without saying that in most cases even with the budget amps you should expect to pay at least 10 cents a watt sometimes a little more and that should just you know be a baseline if you see something that says it's 2000 watts and it's 150 bucks eh, i mean i guess it's possible if they have it on sale or have a big promotion going on but usually not usually you're not going to be able to find anything that cheap but as far as subwoofers and coaxials and all the other stuff with speakers they're all over the place yeah for sure and as a general rule of thumb you, you kind of get what you pay for now there there is you know a uh, trademark term budget gems out there as uh ryan calls them but you you do have to do a little bit of research you don't just pick up any super pyramid pro you know what whatever it is that it that it's out nowadays or etc or you know anything that's out there you just you got to be a little wise to to what you're getting yeah and again it's so much easier to do research now than you know we used to see the ads in the magazines even flipping through the directories there would be a amp that would say it's 2000 watts and it's like 200 dollars and then we see another one that's 2000 it's 2000 dollars and you're like i don't understand and nowadays we can actually show you why that is but for the budget brands they have a few strategies of, of how they market things and how they sell things and how they make money obviously volume they're gonna have to sell a lot more products to make money they do a lot of the online promotions and sales you'll see that a lot you know some of the companies you'll see will you know they'll go out to these chinese or korean build houses they'll buy quantity of amplifiers or speakers or whatever and they'll have their logo slapped on them and they'll come online and hey i got this stuff you know for sale for super cheap blah 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 some people are making it doing that these days i mean we call them cookie cutter amplifiers because they're pretty much just build house amplifiers with different names on them but some companies do pretty well with that it's all about you know a are you going to be cheap enough um but B, if you're a little bit more expensive and you have a good support network where you're doing, you know, repairing if they have problems, customer service, things like that. But for the most part, you know, the budget stuff is just that. It's budget. It's cookie cutter. You're not getting these custom designs, you know, these real fancy power supplies and stuff like that. And if you guys go on eBay and Amazon and just kind of go to the car audio section and start scrolling you know what i'm talking about and i'm gonna throw some names out there for budget audio pipe scar audio ct sounds wolfram audio boss power acoustic did i miss any rob i'm sure you did but i i there's so many out there now how, how could you name them all true true if you if you're on amazon though you'll notice even when you're looking at something really nice they'll be sponsored uh, items for sale and scar audio sponsors a lot of stuff on amazon you'll see the, them and ct sounds and a few others that are down there so they're you know super thin i'm taking at margins on their products but they're selling big quantities so that's what they have to do yeah and you know we had an episode speaking directly on cookie cutters and you know stuff like that and we kind of fall in the camp of you know if you if you're cutting a deal fine if you're if you're got a cookie cutter product and you're playing it off as a boutique or something like that and we start to have a problem with it you know and that's where you test three amps and you say hey all three of these amps are the same one of them's 300 more than than the other the guts don't lie yeah even if the heat sinks are a little different or whatever guts don't lie so 
with all that said, we've kind of broken this down into amplifiers and speakers and maybe some head units, but obviously one of the budget gem that Ryan would call it um, amplifiers is the audio pipe AP MI 2000. Ryan tested this one. I can't remember the exact wattage, but it was pretty close to 2000 watts, Rob. If you do you remember? Um yeah, I think it was right at it was it was at 2000 2000 watts exactly almost. Yep. Yeah, right at it. And as you can see here on Amazon, $170. <laughs> yeah. So this one breaks my rule of 10 cents a watt, but it's pretty close. But this one kind of varies like anything else on Amazon. It it ranges anywhere between like 165 and like 185 depending on the day or whatever. But that's just a crazy value for a sub amp. And, and this one's this one's really proven itself, you know, over time, I think. Uh, if you look at it, these are the kind of budget amps you want to go for because time and time again, they're always performing. They don't seem to have as many turnbacks, you know, as, as some of the other brands. So when you find something that works, it, it's good to stick with it. Yeah, and they come with a fuse holder, too, and that fuse holder is like at least a $10 item, and it comes with a fuse, too. It's like yeah. if you just want a budget amp and you don't have a lot of money, it's, it's tough to beat that. It's a good thing to start with. One of the other brands we mentioned briefly, Wolfram Audio, they they kind of blew it out of the water when they first introduced this amp, the C2400.1. It was originally pre-selling for $199, and they They've since bumped it up to 249 and say the normal price is 299 But Ryan tested this one too, and it was 2,600 watts, I think, at 1 ohm. So at that 199 price, this was, this was the best deal dollar per watts. But, um, you know, Wolfram buys these. They have them done in a build house. They obviously buy bulk. They sell them out, and then they use the money to buy more amps, and that's why they're always out of stock. And these are back order estimated ship date May thirty first, twenty nineteen. So you're gonna be waiting for a while. Yeah, that's called a uh, sav. He being very savvy <laughs> as far as business goes. I mean, if you're back order on every single lot you get, uh, you're doing something right. Well, there is some benefit to that because if you don't consistently have all this stuff in stock then what does it do? Builds up demand, right? Yeah. People are like, ooh, that 2,600 watt amp, that's $220. I want one. Yeah, so, that's that's the Nintendo method. Yeah, we, we love that <laughs> method too, don't we, Rob? <laughs> Not as far as Nintendo's. No. We, we won't get on that side tangent because I could, I could go on that Nintendo thing for a while. So one of the things I mentioned, oh, before I get to that, Orion has teased and they put it on Facebook and everything else about a 2000 watt Korean built amplifier for $200. But crickets, I don't know. I haven't heard anything about it since like the end of last year when they were talking about it. I haven't, I haven't even seen that. They never really showed it. I think it was just kind of teased that they were going to, you know, blow the market up by introducing a 2000 watt amp for 200 bucks. and it's going to be made in Korea. So, Maybe Where's their still... stuff made now? Aren't don't they make their stuff in Korea now? They own their own factory, correct? Yes, but uh, a lot of their budget stuff, like the Cobalt and some of the other uh, oh. budget lines, are, are China. So they're oh, okay. they're not all made in the Korean facilities. But we'll keep an eye on those, and if you know they do come out, then we'll, we'll let you guys know about them. Yeah, for sure. But the other thing is that I wanted to mention is if you're on a budget. Do you really need to get a 2000 watt amplifier? Rob, what do you think? You know my answer to that because I've never even run over 1500 watts in my vehicle as is, so I don't I don't ever need over 2000 watts unless I'm trying to compete. Now the thing is people like more bass than I do. A lot of them. So you need to balance it, you know. Sometimes people getting into this game, they think you just, you just need a lot of power to do what you want to do. Sometimes you got to do a little research and, and try to balance the amount of power you need with the, with the actual output output you're looking for. Yeah, the other thing you have to consider, obviously, is the amplifier is not the only component here. 
you know, if you're going to save money on an amplifier, you're still going to have to buy speakers. But if you're going for a 2,000 watt amp, you're not going to be able to use your factory um, electrical. You're going to at least have to get a, a second battery. Because if you're going factory electrical with a 2,000 watt amp, you're going to be straining even the biggest, bulkiest, you know, heavy duty trucks that have the big alternators. You're going to be you're going to be, uh, they're going to be struggling. Let's put it that way. You're going to at least have to have an extra battery. So if you're, you know, your main goal is big base, but on a budget, just make sure you, you factor in the electrical that you're going to need to do either an extra battery to begin with. And you may find that your voltage is dropping too low. You're going to have to get a high output alternator. So you're going to have to add that into your cost. So in a lot of cases, what I would recommend for people who are on a budget, is get a four channel amplifier a nice four channel amp that's got good power what you can do is you can run the front two channels to your your mids and highs bridge the rear channels to your sub and then as your system grows or it, you know if you decide you need more personally when I was in high school I had one four channel Rockford amp and I had it set up that way and I used it that way for years and it was plenty of power for what I needed I didn't break any glass or hit 150s or anything like that but I was satisfied I could roll my windows down and still fill the base I was good so and I, I think go ahead Rob I, I think some people would be surprised the kind of output you can get from a 5 to 1000 watt amp and that's something you can legitimately try to run off your stock system with you know big enough one op power wire and all that so just don't be so focused heavily on the power Try to factor in, like you said, as a whole. If you need to buy an alternator, I'm telling you right now, that's double whatever budget amp you're looking at, looking for. Because if don't buy those cheap eBay alternators. If you're going to do it, buy a decent alternator. Because you, I mean, that's not just for your stereo. That that's part of your car. And if you're driving this thing every day, do not buy a cheap alternator. Yeah, and as Rob said, I mean, the Mechmans and the Singers and the other ones. I mean, you're talking between five and six hundred bucks i think for most cars yeah for sure so the cheap the cheapest ones are going to be like 400 450 right so yeah i mean it depends on what your goal is but you know a lot of people i think are kind of scared away from car audio because they think all it is is you know guys that have massive systems with you know amplifiers all throughout the car and everything but if you're on a budget you just want a little extra base in some cases you can just get a powered subwoofer and that may give you all you want. So you don't always have to go start off with a 2,000 watt, you know, audio pipe APMI 2000. Because even though it's 170 bucks, it's going to cost you a lot more to get the full um, worth out of that amp. You know, to give it the electrical that it needs. So kind of went a little bit off on a tangent on that, but I think that is not stated enough. What we just talked about, the fact that. A lot of people think that, oh, I got to spend all my money on the amp and they don't yeah. take into account everything else. And like you said, if you've got a, you know, decent subs and a good box and it's tuned right, 500 watts going to a couple of 12s is slamming. Yeah, for sure. I mean, that's the last system I run was only 600 watts on, on two subs, so. That's... And you've got a big truck, so I'm talking yeah. you know, smaller car. <laughs> anyway, everybody has their own idea of what's loud and what you know what they're looking for, but just I think you should just think about it a little more and do some research before you decide to get you know the highest power amp you can get for the price first, because that may not be the route that you really want to go. Yeah. So so after we get the amp sorted out, we need to talk about subwoofers. So, so what's your thought? We're still on the budget side here. What do you like as far as subwoofers? What are you looking for? So I haven't done extensive testing with a lot of different brands of budget subs, but the ones I have tested, I've, I've liked thus far. Um, I've got the page up here, not a lot to show you, but the Rockville K9 subs, I know the, the very first round of these, there were some issues with the glue um, on the voice coils and, you know, they were coming separated and stuff like that. And people were having all kind of problems online, but, uh, there's me and several other people have done some testing on these new canines and 
I haven't heard anybody having issues yet. And you can see the the W12 K9, the D2s, and I think they have D4s too. 115 bucks, and that's shipped. And it's a beefy looking sub, man. And it, it's pretty impressive for the price. Again, you know, these are obviously made in China. Um, they say the coils are made in the U.S. I don't, I don't know if that's really the case or not. Somebody can correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. I'm sure they will. Are those stitched too? They They're are like, stitched. Oh, yeah, wow. the surround is stitched. It's um, it's a really nice. It reminds me a lot of the Sundown SA12. Oh man! As far as how it looks now, obviously you're, you're I, setting a high benchmark there. I, I know. I, I can't <laughs> say that it sounds as good as the Sundown SA12 because that's that's a that's a legendary sub. But yeah, you know, for 115 bucks and seems to be pretty good. One of the other brands we we talk about Savard all the time. Uh, yeah. Obviously, Savard is an old school company, but they've come back to car audio and, you know, they've got the high Q eights and the twelves and it looks like they're coming out with the six and a halves. Right. Coming soon. Uh, they and, still have and, the wrap tens. Uh, they have new pro series coming out. I, I'm assuming at some point. Yeah. Yeah. They're, I think they're right in between coming out with some new stuff, but if you yep. check their facebook page and we'll, we'll try to link to it in the video description they always have specials going on on their speakers um yeah. quite a quite a nice discount on those and they're they're good quality stuff and I, i've played extensively with with the first gen rap 12 and for the money i mean it it's a very hard sub to beat uh i played obviously extensively with with the first gen uh pro 12s and you know they're they're very solid for the money and they're reliable so in my experience anyways yeah that i mean that's what's that's what's important you know the the issue that some people were having with those original rockville subs um i think a lot of people have problems but i think there's a lot of people who still commented to me that said that they still have the the v1s and they haven't had any issues with them so i'm not sure if it was the people who were pushing them right up to their limits as far as wattage goes you know, maybe maybe they um, overrated them a little bit and said they could handle 1,200 watts and they really couldn't handle that much. I don't know. Yeah. But Well, you know, anybody gets them subs. They're going to, if they got 2,000 watts, that sub's getting 2,000 watts. <laughs> they're not, a lot of times they're not matching them up like they should be. That's true. That, I'm that's, speaking about myself as well, so. That's a valid point. <laughs> They've got that audio pipe APMI 2000, you know, on one of those Rockville yeah. subs. It says 4,000 on the magnet. No, don't believe that number. So another brand, uh, Scar Audio, I've already talked about. You know, yeah. they they would be another what I'd consider budget for subwoofers. And you know, I can't believe that every review on Amazon is a bought review because there's a lot of people that really like their subwoofers, especially yeah. for the for the price. And they're right there. You know, they're always they're competing on price on every single product. So I mean. You you can't really be mad at that because yeah maybe it is a cookie cutter design, but if you're competing on price, I mean hey that that's the way you know modern capitalist system works. So that is the truth. The other budget company, and we just have Jeff on a couple shows ago, but Parts Express. Yeah, the Dayton Audio subwoofers are pretty impressive and. They obviously have them up to the Ultimax, but even the Classic Series um, get some pretty good reviews. And a lot of people, if you read the reviews, people say they use them in car audio and they compare them to other brands and stuff. And, you know, you're talking 120 bucks or so for the Classic 12, maybe a little less. And that's comparative, you know, to... Uh, yeah to one of the cheaper scars or one of the uh, cheaper sundowns when they put them on sale. But you don't always have to pay for the brand. I mean, it no. might, might be all you need. And, and Dayton, they do a lot of, a lot of really good things, you know, so you can know that what they put out is going to be reliable. So that's one thing that I like about them. Yet you might not have a four inch voice cool for your 12 inch sub, but you know, it might only have a two and a half inch voice cool or, or maybe even a three in some of the better ones but they perform and they, and they do what they're supposed to do. So, Yeah, you can just search online. There's a lot of reviews, uh, not only just on their website, but people put 
reviews on YouTube and Amazon has got a lot of reviews on them as well. Again, you know, Amazon reviews are tough because you, you don't ever know how many of them are legit and how many of them are not. But I think if you read and throw out the really bad ones and throw out the really good ones and just deal with the ones kind of in the middle, and you can kind of read them and tell if somebody is like pushing their product or not in most cases. So. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, if you're an experienced Amazon user, you kind of tell right away, and I'm sure most people are by now. Well, we don't know if they're experienced or not because they're still buying those ball samps, man. They're still like number one bestseller every time I check. Because they're cheap, man. Well, they I just know. want something and, cheap. And they won't blow up. I had to use, <laughs> had to drop copper into the circuit board to make it go up in flames. I was hoping it would be a dramatic show, but boss and their protection circuitry, it's boss yeah. level. That's that's where the boss comes from. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> so as far as head units go, Rob, what do you feel about budget head units? Is that somewhere where you'd want to save money or would you want to spend a little more and get something a little nicer man it's hard to say nowadays because everything's digital you you don't need uh, you you know your cd player isn't as big a deal you're probably using bluetooth anyways um yeah man i don't know i mean most people are probably going to stick with their factory radio to be honest with you so if you are using a head unit mm, it, it's hard to say if, if you're doing it you're doing it for the features not the quality most of the time, I would say. Yeah, the the one thing I would caution people on is these Android double den head units that have, you know, GPS. They have backup camera inputs. They have a free call to your mama every day. I mean, they just have all these other features that are built in with a big old fat touch screen. And most of the reviews I've seen on them, you know, they've got the horrible touch screen. They've got the I always get it backwards. Is it resistive versus capacitive, right? One of them is better than the other. That got, the resistive is terrible. Okay, so they've got the resistive touchscreen, although a lot of car audio companies still do that. Boo. But uh, And they're so slow because they use an older version of Android, and it's like, you know, just getting the screen, you just swipe it, and it just barely moves. And the icons, when you touch them, it takes five minutes for it to load. You start your car up takes two minutes for the head unit to boot up. You're already halfway to your grandma's house to give her some milk, and your head unit still hasn't connected to your phone yet. You don't want that, people. No, and, and you know, if, if someone's actually interested in this topic, check out uh, Dean and Fernando's podcast, because they go really in-depth on those Android Android uh, head units and, and stuff like that. So they, I can't remember. I think it was maybe three episodes back, but. That's a good tip. We'll have to remember to link that one from below. Somebody put, leave us yeah. a note so we'll remember <laughs> to do that. Because, yeah, that that's good. And I've seen EXO uh, did a video where, I, you know, if you're on YouTube and you have any kind of an audience, sizable audience, you'll get a lot of these companies trying to send you things to review. Obviously, they say, hey, we're going to give you this $150 head unit. Could you do a video for us? You know, In a lot of cases, you're like, it's really worth a lot more money of my time and my viewership to anyway, we won't get into that, but, uh, I don't usually do that type stuff, especially with those cheap head units, but EXO, he does, you know, Bluetooth speakers. He does earbuds. He'll do all kind of stuff, which is cool. If you got the time to do it, people want to see it, then do it. But I'll, I'll, uh, track here a little bit. Sorry. The head units, he did some of the um, Android-based head units, and he didn't like them. The ones that he tested, he said they were really crappy. And I think even some of the ones he tested were the more expensive, like several hundred dollars, three, four, five hundred dollar ones that are designed to replace like a factory unit in the car. So, so I'm glad he tested them that that nobody else had to deal with it. You yeah, know, they watch he, the videos. He does, a, you know, in-depth reviews a lot of cases. So he'll he'll go over the whole thing, and he did. Well, if we can remember, we'll link to that one, too. And if we can't, somebody else do a search. Just in the chat room real quick and go ahead and find that video and, and post uh, post it for us so we can just copy and paste. That would be very helpful, people. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for helping us out. So my thought on that is kind of like Rob's. If you've got a recent, a recent car that's pretty new and you've got all your controls built in, there's no real reason to upgrade your head unit. If you have an older car... Personally, I would be careful with choosing budget head units. You can choose one 
maybe that's just a digital media, media receiver. If you don't need a CD, that can save you a little bit of money. Um, go to Crutchfield and do some research there because there's usually some really good uh, technical reviews on a lot of the head units by the Crutchfield staff, but then also the people who have bought them, there'll be some really good reviews. And I don't think they let people leave a review unless they bought it from there, if I remember right. Yeah, yeah, because every time I buy something, they send me an email, want me to review it. So. so that'll give you a good idea. If people have had good luck with stuff, they'll say it. And I don't think Crutchfield cuts out the bad reviews. You know, they may, like, they'll leave a response saying that they can contact them if they're having an issue with it. Yeah. But that that's a good way to find you a budget head unit if you want. But, again, I'd be careful. Don't go for the Android yeah. ones unless you do a lot of research and find one that's going to work good. And, and don't expect to power your speakers off of it either. Basically, if you're buying a, I mean, even if you're buying a good one, they're just not, they're not for that anymore. No, there's very few uh, exceptions to that rule, but for the most part, yeah, unless you're just going to power some rear speakers for some fill or something, that's okay. But, yeah, you really want to get an amp for your front speaker so you can get in some juice. I mean, if you're listening to us, like, what are you doing? If you're just hooking your speakers up, like, don't. <laughs> I don't know what you're doing with your life. You're listening to us and, and you're hooking your speakers up to your $20, $29 dual media receiver. It's going to blow up the internet. So, so Somebody's doing it right now. You know and they they're going They're going to tell me. And they're going to stop listening because you, you made them feel bad. Rob. I mean, if it took this long for them to stop listening. <laughs> <laughs> you hurt their feelings. Yeah. So we actually had a previous show, episode 13, on how to get deals in car audio. And we talked about how to get legitimate deals, like how to get the good stuff for cheap or how to get the cheap stuff for even cheaper. That's episode 13. We'll link it below so you guys can see it. Again, if somebody in the chat room is watching and wants to go ahead and link that for us, we'd appreciate it. So that's about all we're going to talk about about the budget stuff. What about what we call high-end car audio? This yeah. has already been a little bit uh, of a hot topic because of what I, some of the brands, like in the little thumbnail you'll see on the left, I've got some of the budget. On the right, i got some. I didn't put them all. People, don't wad up your panties. I just put some. And I had uh, some gentleman from Budget and Bust Car Audio say, Rockford Fosgate isn't baller. That one went deep. <laughs> to me, especially. Rockford is like the original high-end, old-school, from way back in the day brand. Yeah. They s Sure, they sell inexpensive stuff, the prime, the punch, but a lot of the technology that Rockford has developed over the years has helped out a lot of other brands too. And their high end stuff, it's still high end. Would oh, you even, agree it, or disagree? Oh, for sure. I mean, hey Ryan, we're looking at you. Rockford Fosgate, who who's gonna buy a fifteen hundred watt Rockford Fosgate amp? And consider it middle of the road when you when you could get literally something for one quarter of the cost or less to do the same power, it's roughly true. or it's, rated power. It's true, and but and you, know, you got the constant power technology. Yeah, you've got things that most other amplifiers don't have. So, yes, Rockford Rockford is a well known, you know. Band, uh, brand across car audio and mobile and I said mobile but uh, <laughs> marine audio yeah. uh, motorcycles ATVs side by sides all that stuff they're big they're you know I consider them more of a high end than a kicker kicker yeah. still makes some high end stuff too don't get me wrong and I think kicker gets a bad name because they're sold in, in Walmart but that's just a couple of the kicker products that's not they still have what a a thousand dollar twenty four hundred watt amp? Yeah. yeah, they got the Q series, and that, that's their uh, dealer only. Speaking of, of the uh, high end tactics, you know that offering it dealer only, supporting your dealers. Yes, well, and there's a reason for that, right? Because they want the higher end brands in a lot of cases want the dealers to help educate the consumers, and I. 
this is going off on a little bit of a tangent. I'll try not to go too far. Hey, this is what we, this is a tangent show. It is. They already know we're not but, as bad as everyday audios, <laughs> but 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 we do do some tangents. So the tangent I'll refer to is uh, Andy Waymeyer made a, a comment about do we need do we really need to teach consumers about car audio? And that kind of hit me. It's like, do you really need to teach a consumer about car audio? Because when you get a new air conditioning for your house, does your AC man walk up and does he tell you, you know, I'm going to put in this much Freon and I'm going to turn this up to this PSI and da, 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 da. And, you, you know, you're like, I don't care. Do you really need to know all this stuff or do you just need to go somewhere and then, you know, find out what somebody suggests? Hey, you just go in there and be like, hey, radio man, make it sound good. There How much go. is it going to cost? Well, that's why Dean and Fernando are good at what they do. They say how much you guys want to spend, you know, and they can pick you out a pretty decent system because they install so many of them. They know better than the customer probably what they want. So I don't and that's, know. That's a benefit even outside the high-end brands, you know. That's one benefit of having a location, you know, for that reason, especially on high-end brands. If you have an issue, they can take care of it if you need to kind of see what the product sounds like or you want to experience it before you buy it. And if you're, I mean, let's face it, if you're spending $2,000 on an amplifier, $500, $700 on a subwoofer, uh, $1,000 component system, you want to hear it. You want to see what it sounds like or, you know, you, maybe you've been to a competition, but, but you do want to hear it. So I do understand that on, on the higher end. Yeah, I'd agree. So, what, what, what I did with the high end is I kind of broke down the strategy. I talked about the strategy for the budget, but for the high end, Rob already mentioned it, the dealer supported network. That's obviously at the top because in most cases, you don't see uh, direct people selling direct that do the higher end. And we're talking amplifiers, speakers, stuff like that. Um, they have a lower volume in a lot of cases, but higher profit margin quality over quantity I would say the other thing would be uniquely engineered designs and JL Audio and Rockford uh, obviously audio control that I recently tested they they spend a lot more time and effort and money on engineering to make something unique and they do what they do for a reason you know the, the Rockford 1500 watt amp that you were talking about earlier that still sells for 800 bucks, you know, it cost them a lot to engineer that years ago, and they're still having to recoup some of that cost. I think that's why it's still $800. But it's not an amp that you're going to find anybody else make because they've got that constant power technology uh, patented. They've got, you know, just a unique design all the way around, the way it cools the MOSFETs and stuff, the way it funnels all the heat heat off of the amplifier things like that and also with the audio control it was a very small amplifier that put out extremely good power stayed cool has built-in high-level inputs has built-in bass adjustments and JL audio obviously the HD series and their new VXI series they spend a lot of time and effort and money in engineering and when they come out with a product you're pretty much certain that they're they're rock solid. They've been tested. They've been beat up. And you're, yeah, I see people comment all the time. Why would I spend six hundred dollars on a fifteen hundred watt amp? Well, yeah. If you want it to last, you know, six, eight, ten years. Need yeah, a small and, amp. and you know, there's amps that cost twenty four hundred dollars for a, a fifteen hundred watt amp, and you know, I can compare it to tools. So you've got a pair of the Harbor Freight or even Walmart, their house brand, whatever it's called, Project Source or whatever, pair their channel locks will cost you four bucks, five bucks. Channel lock, a well known brand, this is one I would compare to like Rockford Fosgate. They sell theirs. Now they're not expensive, but they're 15, 16 bucks. And then on high end you have like uh the German brand Knipex. It's gonna cost you about seventy dollars. Now the latter two are both gonna last you a lifetime. You may get some benefit or features from the Knipex 
because I got a, a, a unique design. But then, but the channel lock, you're going to be able to do what you need to do, and it's designed well, and it's going to last forever. The cheap ones, you may get lucky, and it may last a long time, but it's probably not going to. So even though Rockford, we do consider it a baller brand, they're not as expensive as you can get when you're talking about the Italian and, and uh, you know, uh, morale out of, out of uh, Israel, something like that. Yeah, and that's a good point, Rob. And one of the things that I kind of broke down our high-end audio into kind of the SQ and the SPL. Because if you think about it, there's high-end brands for both sides, right? So we've already mentioned JL, Rockford, Audio Control, Focal, Hertz, Linear Power, Audison. And then you get into the SPL brands, you're talking Sundown Audio, DC Audio, Crescendo, the list goes on and on. B2 Audio. So, you know, it's not just one-sided here. We're at SQ and SPL. There's high-end with those because you could just easily say, well, the SCAR 1500-watt amp is, you know, 199 on Amazon or 219 The Sundown version is 549 yeah. What's up well, with that? You know, when we had uh, um, Troy and Ethan on from the Amp Lab, like they talk about it, you know, even though they are an official Sundown Repair Center, they get less returns off them. You know, they're they're built more solidly. So even though the wattage is the same, in the same case as you would with the Rockford Fosgate, it's going to cost you more for engineering. If there's some sort of thought put into it, then it's going to cost more. It's simple as that. And, you know, Basically, they deserve that amount if they put in that work. I would agree. And I want to show real quick, I don't know how many people have seen this, but uh, Audison has the Thesis series. They have amplifiers and speakers and a few other. Um, let me show you the Venti. I thought I had this one pulled up already, sorry. I actually have one of these here <laughs> to Dino. Uh, sent from a, a good friend. I don't even, Rob, do you even know what this amp costs? I think it's like eight or ten thousand dollars. Is that right? I have no clue, man. I, I know it's very, very expensive. Yeah, these are, I think these are hand built. And actually, Dean and Fernando, we, we were going to bring them again, up again, but they talked about this because I think they interviewed one of the guys from Audison and he said they make like one per day or or something like that, but it's like all hand built all the way through. But that's a that's a pretty amp. I need yeah, to show that, you that one. That's off. a work of art right there. It's pretty amazing. But anyway, you know we're we're going to talk about baller brands. Yeah, you got a trunk like this of 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 eight or ten thousand dollar amps. Yeah, you're a baller. There's no question about that one, Ryan. <laughs> all right. <laughs> so. Um, I think we talked about oh, Sean the, said that I just seen in the chat 8k for the for the Audison uh oh, Venti. okay 8,000 so I won't too yeah. far off <laughs> yeah Whew. That's, that's like a car for me um for subs JL Audio W7s yeah and and there's a range on subs because no, I guess I guess you're right. <laughs> JLW7 is probably towards the very top end of what you'd pay. Because I was going to even say the uh, the Morel um, Ultimo, but those are around the price of a W7. So, yeah, those um, those aren't well known for as being SPL subs, but they use those same W7 drivers in their uh, in their home um, audio subwoofers. So. They are they are serious subs, the W sevens. I was trying to pull up the Rockford. For oh, and they, they they sound good too, man. I mean, you you can speak to that. I've used them, and and they're shocking. Now, maybe you're not going to be breaking world records with with just a few of them, like you can some of the cheaper brands. But you're not not also going to listen to those cheaper, uh, or they might even be cheaper, but more SPL focused uh, subwoofers. You're not going to be listening to them every day, or I won't, anyways. Yeah, that's true. It's and it's very unfortunate right now that the Rockford page under subwoofers, I can't get it to pull up. I was going to show you the the 19 inch um, twenty five hundred dollar sub that they have. 
because that was going to kind of be my baller example of a Rockford Fosgate subwoofer, but the page is not working, so I apologize for that. But, you know, as far as, uh, oh, it just came up. The Power T3 19-inch Superwoofer. Here, I'm going to share my screen for those who are watching live. You'll be able to see this. And uh, our brother Steve Mead actually uh, made a box for one of these and uh, showed it off a while back. So check his channel out if you want to see that. Oh, and you know what I like about that? The front of it actually looks like an older Rockford Fosgate sub because, to be honest with you, I don't like the, the way the P3 and, and them look. Yeah, they could do a lot just by making it look, making it look different. I agree. They some of their designs just look cheap, but this one right here is is pretty fat. And yeah, there's Brother Mead. Yeah. But uh, yeah, look <laughs> look at that sub. My it's gosh, Neo. man. Yeah, it's pretty pretty wicked. It's a single one ohm voice coil, but uh, that's a sweet sub. Somebody yeah. who reviewed it didn't like it. Oh shake, yeah. Shake the Earth base. He says he do not like it all. <laughs> he he destroyed it right after the warranty expired. Okay, uh, anyway. that that's on you. Yeah, but, if you're gonna um, beat on it, do it before the warranty's up. <laughs> yeah, but again, you know, we I don't know that I consider either one of these uh, SPL woofers. I don't know about that Rockford T319. That may be a hybrid. It may be able to be a SQ or a SPL sub. But, you know, obviously the Sundown, uh, what are they? People are going to think I'm crazy because I don't remember. the Z. Are they Z5s? Yeah. Or a ZV5 or something ZV5. like that. The yeah. Nightshades or... Nightshades, NS. Yeah. The um, DD Audio, they still have the, was it 9900 series? Yep. They Things still like, got the 9500 series. Right. So... On the SPL side, there's a lot of, of really high-end subwoofers, too. DC Audio's got their level 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, however yeah. many. Steve Mead Designs, uh, Ascendant Audio does SMD subwoofers. Those I would consider, obviously, SPL subwoofers, but, you know, you've seen what his can do. The one with tearing up the phone book through the port, it still boggles my mind breaking a cd is one thing but when he took the phone book and it just shredded it I don't yeah know. I, I remember it remember it well <laughs> epic that's all i can yeah. say epic epic proportions so what about as far as speakers go not just subs we talked about some of the brands what are, what are, what are your some of your favorites or some of the ones you've drooled over rob well i mean i've got a set in the truck right now that i really like the uh, audible physics and you know that's not a cheap set if you're looking to buy it. you know that's that's around 600 bucks so that that might fall within within this uh range but those sound great uh i've wanted to try the audio frog i haven't got a chance to obviously the uh focal utopia is like the dream set for a lot of people and uh, i've far as i've got to play with is the uh, poly cavalar so what about you what what, what kind of components i know you're going to say boston right um, yeah, I mean, I've been a fan of Boston for a while, but they don't, they haven't made those in several years now. These, uh, focal, the, the, the focal, are they K2s? I think the K2s are the ones I, I really like that I've heard that are kind of somewhat reasonable. I think they're like six or $700 for a set with six and a halfs. Yeah, that's the Poly Cavalar ones. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. The, the other ones now, the ones that come in a case and... Uh, the Utopias, I think they're they're several thousand. Was it five thousand dollars? Something yeah. crazy. Yeah, um, they've got them a range all the way up to maybe ten thousand or twelve thousand dollars. So you got to get you some of these and get you a couple of those thesis amps. Yeah. And what kind of subs can they get? You know, we're talking to people here who are ballers, so they they can get it. They can get whatever. Oh man, I mean, if you're gonna do that. Like, what, are we trying to SQ here? Are we trying to SPL? I don't know. We're just trying We're to We're SQ, and I'm getting some of those Utopia subs or, uh, you know, maybe even the, the Morale Ultimo or Ultimax or whatever their highest end is. Yeah, the Utopia BE sub, that looks pretty fat. Oh, heard yeah. one, though. But it, no. don't have to, it don't have to sound good. It can just look good. <laughs> I'm going to show you a picture of those who are online here that can see it. It's pretty unique. 
check out the the motor structure on there. It's a 13 inch sub. There you go. It has a sandwich composite sandwich cone. I'm guessing those are Neo magnets. Yeah, I believe they are. Somebody will correct me if I'm wrong. That, that, that's when you get into the high end you know, money wise, you know, as, as far as uh, subwoofers, when they start using Neo and, and even regular speakers. Well, if you're buying $8,000 thesis amps and, you know, $10,000 uh, focal components, then you're not really worried about that. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> um, Audio Frog, uh, they, they've been pretty popular in the SQ arena. I've never heard them personally, but I've heard a lot of positive things about them. Yeah, they, they, they sell look, them on Crutchfield too, don't they? Yep, and and they're well made. You can tell. Uh, I think they are made in China, but you can tell there's been some thought put into uh, to how they're made and and how they're installed and and the user friendly options, I guess, or the DIY friendly options. Yeah, there was some discussion about that too, about you know why they were made in China, and obviously, they. Um, the manufacturer part was done in China, but I think all the engineering was done here to determine what they wanted to do, and they just had to find somebody who's capable of building what they needed. And when you, you know, when you're trying to to build a product, if you can have it all done in one place, then why not? Why are you going to try yeah. to ship this part here I and mean, that part there? We know a company that does that. That's right. And so, yep, it's not, so. not much different than that. And. I can't say that any Apple product I've ever bought has been anything but superb quality wise. Yeah. But as far as yeah, the as far as I'm concerned, iPads, I, I they, they already original. know we're we're fanboys. They already know. So yeah, I know they're already hating us in the in the yeah. chat room. But hey, I have a first gen iPad that still lasts for like five hours. Don't it's get the new dry. Pro though. They bend. Well, yeah. If you, <laughs> if you try to flex it, it'll bend. Um, one of the other companies that we didn't talk about, Audio Dynamics, AD Designs. Yep. They've got some really cool um, demos uh, if you go to their YouTube channel. And he's got a, a switching machine, and he's switching between, you know, two different component sets that are behind grills, so you can't tell which is which. And one of them is Focal, and one of them is um, their brand. And he just switches back and forth. And at the very end, he'll tell you which one is which. And even though, you know, you're listening over YouTube, it's compressed, there's still some noticeable difference. And he even switches the um, the tweeter level on one of them because he says it's a little high and he's going to make it more, more level. It's still noticeable. Uh, you know, it's never the same as having it inside your vehicle and getting the true sound of how it sounds in your vehicle and it's tuned and everything. But... I still think it's cool to have a demo like that. Yeah. This is this quick side jag. Have you seen the meme where it has the dog with the scarf and the glasses on? And it says, I bet you've never heard 20,000 Hertz. Every time someone talks about YouTube compression, that's what I see them. They're in their pinky in their air. They're talking They're with that dog and the scarf talking about, I bet you can't hear 20,000 Hertz. Past the gray poupon. Yeah. <laughs> Can't hear it. Well, you know, those of us that make videos, it's really hard to portray certain things. And I think a lot of people are going to poo poo whatever you do on a video. But when you're trying to show SQ comparisons, yes, it's difficult. Yes, that person may be listening back on their cell phone, you know, and oh, yeah, this speaker definitely sounds better than that one through this 0 0.001 inch driver in here. But I, I don't know. If you got headphones on and you really can't hear the difference, I think it's neat. But AD Designs also has a mobile uh, demo vehicle that they drive all, all around. And that's pretty cool that they're able to A, B, C uh, demo between different brands at the same time and show people what their products do versus what some of the other ones do. So I don't, I wouldn't sleep on audio dynamics 80 designs i think oh they're no a, they're they're a big time and and they do it at a reasonable price comparatively to, to everything else so yep and not giving away future things but we may have somebody from 80 designs on a future episode of 12 volt talk 
Stay yeah. tuned. Stay tuned. We're trying to have everybody on here. That's right. Everybody, and their mom and their brother and their sister. <laughs> so uh, any other speakers you can think of, Rob, that uh, obviously I didn't put Boston in here because – yeah. A lot of the newer school guys are going to say Boston who, but yeah. you know, the guys from the nineties know Boston acoustics pro series were, they were the bomb diggity them and the MB courts back then were head and head. They were, you know, both ultra quality, super good. And I've still got a lot of Boston, uh, pro series separates here and they're really nice speakers. Just the build quality is, is yeah. you just have to hold it in your hand. It's all cast aluminum little six inch driver that's i don't know, I have to show you one day you have to see <laughs> have to yeah so there's a there is a few other brands phd is a brand i like um mb court they still make stuff under i can't remember the name of them right off hand but uh oh man you're not talking about the, the uh max sonics mb court are you no 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 it, okay. it's the original guys that made mb court they they do sell stuff now i, I just can't think of the name offhand so they're out there. If you're looking for them, uh, Morel, we didn't we didn't uh, mention them at all, but they do a ton of OEM, car audio, home audio. They do everything. D- uh, Dyn Audio is one of the biggest ones. So that, that's a few of the other ones I could think of. Yeah, and both of those companies do a lot of stuff for uh, OEM, like you said, and and home home uh, speakers as well. Some very renowned home speakers from Morel. Uh, Sean well. got me. He said German Maestro. That's what it is. There you go. German Maestro. Yep. Formerly known as MB Court. Now they're the real deal. So, what about head units, Rob? Uh, there are some pretty high end head units out there still. Not a lot, but they're. What's your favorite? Yeah. If, you, if you had. No, if you had you know, we just won the lottery, and you can buy whatever head units you could get. Which one would you buy? Don't say Android. <laughs> <laughs> so I, you know, I don't know. I don't know what I'd buy. I might buy another another uh, PRS eighty because I'm telling you right, like that new Sony, the GS nine. Uh, that was a lot of hype to me. I just it it is what it is, and it ain't worth that money. I mean, there's no one in the world that could tell me legitimately that it's worth the money that money that it costs but you just won the lottery so it doesn't matter hey i'm still frugal man i don't care how much money i got i'm not gonna waste my money all right fair that's fair <laughs> so obviously the the sony uh g i think it's gs9 it's the single den sq sony head unit that's is it 12 or 1500 should i think it's up. think it's 1200 now but Check this out. You got to use the app to control everything off there. You can't do it off the like. Don't do that. Don't ever do that. Oh, if this costs twelve hundred dollars, put it, put a dang computer in there so that I can control it. Yeah, the um, I've got that Sony six channel DSP amp here, and it, and you can control some of the functions of it through the app. Yeah. Uh that app leaves a lot to be desired. I think it's the same app that that head unit uses. I know, and you, and you guys should take my criticism of the GS9 pretty heavily because I love Sony. I love old Sony. I love a lot of the new Sony stuff. But this one, like, I draw the line. I draw the line right here. Like, that thing is way too much, and it, it's not worth that much money. I almost thought that we were talking about that Pioneer head unit that had the little dock that you oh. that you blew up on <laughs> not too many something. episodes I, ago. That yeah, thing got, is junk. <laughs> I got strong opinions, man. Sometimes they just fly out. Oh, one day, that... one day, Mister Sony's gonna come up to me and have a little chatter, or Mister uh, Pioneer. <laughs> no, I tell you, and I know Dean and Fernando, name dropping again, have talked about this before. But the eighty PRS is is extremely long in the tooth. Why Pioneer? Why can't you do a double den version of that? That would be so awesome. Have a really nice screen on it. Keep all the yeah. SQ features. But obviously, Pioneer is. Now they've been bought by some Hong Kong investment company. So who yeah. knows if they're ever going to have anything sound quality based again. Well, I, and it's partly our fault. You know, we're not buying them. The, us as the royal we, you know, people aren't buying head units that much because you can't put them in these new cars. So it's kind of a catch-22, really. That's not our fault, Rob. 
we didn't design no. the cars with the head units and the and the controls and everything all mixed together. But we'll take the blame. <laughs> so you mentioned the ADPRS, the P ninety nine RS. I think that one's been discontinued, or is it still available? I didn't even look on Crutchfield. I think it's uh, been discontinued. I think I think it has, but that one was eleven hundred. Eleven hundred, no. I see it for sale a lot of times for six hundred. Yeah, maybe, maybe at six hundred, you're, you're talking about something. But uh, at eleven hundred, I don't think so. I mean, you're basically adding over the the eighty. You're getting a, a nicer finish. Obviously, the build quality of the eighty is is absolute trash, in my opinion. But that you get a four way setup, uh, you get a little more flexibility. But let me tell you, like, if you're running active on the eighty PRS or even the ninety nine. Your flexibility is limited significantly, and you're going to be running within their parameters. Yeah, so it appears the 99 is still an active product on Crutchfield. It doesn't say that it's discontinued. It's 1195 I think it used to be 1199 so they dropped it by uh, $4. <laughs> but uh, this unit does not have Bluetooth built in. And that was one of the big deals why a lot of people wanted the, the ADPRS because it did have Bluetooth. You had to buy a separate Bluetooth module for this one. Oh, my gosh. Get out of here with that and nonsense. No, man. and I'm crazy. serious. And not only that, Rob, you can't hardly find it anymore because I'm pretty sure that, that – here. let's see. Where does it say Bluetooth? I can't find it. But, um, yeah, that little module uh, that you needed separately, those go for several hundred dollars because they're not – Readily available, unless I'm thinking about something wrong. And again, people will correct me in the comments if I am wrong. But that's what I recall about that. And it, a couple of times I had a chance to get one for like five or six hundred bucks, but I wasn't able to find the Bluetooth, and I was not going to sacrifice no. the, the convenience, as Rob says. Convenience trumps fidelity. Trumps fidelity. It and, does. Overall, if you weigh it out, I mean, very few people are willing to uh, be inconvenienced for fide for the fidelity of it. That and, is true. you know, while we're talking about them Bluetooth modules, like audio control, what are you doing with that new, that new, uh, it's the RTA and, and the other product, the new DSP, you got to have the Bluetooth chip. Like, come on, man, it is 2019. Put that stuff in there. That is a good point. Yeah. Why would you have to buy that separately? Yeah. Yeah. I don't agree with that either. There was a double DIN Kenwood Exelon. I think it's a DNX995. I'll pull it up real quick. Is that the one Ray's running in his escape? Yes. And Ray did some demos for me, switching back and forth between. He had some um, high fidelity tracks that were 2496 kilobit, 24 bit 96 kilohertz. And. I could tell a difference in the quality. Now, I don't know if they were recorded louder or if there was something of that trickery going on, but he had them on a, I think it was a SD card that was in the side of the unit, and he switched between the CD and that and one other, I think Bluetooth on his phone to show me the difference between the three, and there was definitely a noticeable difference with the the high, uh, high quality version of that file. And yeah, and I, I'm... I mean, I'm not going to pay 1200 for that or 1100 for that unit either. And like, get your navigation out of here, man. That's such junk. <laughs> if you, who would use this over Google Maps or Apple Maps, even Apple Maps, which Apple Maps is terrible because yeah. th there's no traffic, updated traffic. And I, I just don't get that. I don't either. Any of the head unit manufacturers or listening companies, like Rob said, don't put. GPS in your head units anymore. Our phones are so much better. They're updated all the time. You know, just allow us to do the CarPlay or Android Auto or whatever and yeah. put our stuff on the screen. But there's no reason for this unit to be this much other than what they added like three or four hundred extra dollars to have navigation on a lot of head units. This one should be, you know, three or four hundred dollars cheaper and not have that. Then yeah. it would still be too much, but yeah. It's a nice sounding head unit. I just wanted to put it in the list oh, of head sure. units because people who want double DIN, if you want the best sounding double DIN, consider the DNX 995S because it's up there up top. 
how are we looking time wise? We're just after nine. Yeah. People all who are watching this who are basketball fans, UNC and Duke are at nine PM Eastern. That's like right now. So we're <laughs> gonna get through the rest of this. I've already got the D V R set on my YouTube T V to record it. But I'm not gonna stick around a whole lot longer tonight to go watch the basketball game, so no disrespect to the peeps that have joined us, just letting you know. Basketball is uh in North Carolina here, that's two of the biggest teams, and that's like one of the biggest rivalries in the country and all that. So. Oh, I know, because y'all can't play football out there. So. This is true. <laughs> I would throw my not deny in. that. <laughs> but I did hear if you wanted tickets to the Duke game, the cheapest ticket you could get was $2,500. Wow. And some people were paying as much as $10,000. That's, that's insane. insane. Yeah, that's insane. You could buy an autosynthesis. Venti amplifier or you could go to a basketball game yeah and maybe lose lose your mind being around all those kids <laughs> jumping around so i wanted to summarize real quick the budget versus the baller or the budget versus the high end and i've said this many times before and i'm gonna say it again if you're just trying to get into car audio you don't have to spend a lot of money do what we said earlier get you a four channel amp or in some cases, just get you a powered sub, give you some extra bass. If you decide you want to you know, invest more time and money and effort, then you can do that. But the four channel amp deal, I just have a hard time recommending anything but that. Because the best deal about that is if you use a four channel amp and then decide to go with a subwoofer amp, then you've got, you can use the four channel and then add your sub amp. You don't have to buy anything else, you're done. It's like stair stepping. You could go five channel, but usually the five channel amps don't have enough power on the sub channel, don't right, Rob? Yeah, I mean, I would say that. But then, did you you heard Mike Watkins' truck though? Didn't he with that Pioneer? So I mean, it's out there. That is is out there, and that's a little teaser coming up too because I have got several five channel amplifiers that I'm going to be testing on the dyno, including Kenwood. Rockford Fosgate, I've actually got two different models of Rockford Fosgate, and gosh, I have another one too, but I can't remember what it is, but we'll just have to tease you and wait. But the cool thing is I got one of the smaller Rockford Fosgate 1000s, the ones that, you know, the T, whatever, 1000 Oh, like the X5. ones for the boats? Yes, I'm excited about that because it's a Power 1000, and it's super small. <laughs> So I'm going to show that one off coming up here in the future. But, you know, some of the other comments I said, you know, whatever sounds good to you is what's important. Don't worry about what other people say online is the best. Or you have to buy this brand or you have to buy that brand. Just go where your budget leads you. If you need help, go to a shop, see what they recommend. Obviously, it's going to be stuff they sell, but, you know, yeah. try to get some opinions from people you know who've been in the game for a while and maybe have a car like yours or something similar they can give you an idea of something that may sound good and that's about all i had to say about that rob you got anything else yeah well just touching on the point of building your system as you grow or growing with your system buy what you can afford start with that four channel like Derek said start with that get a quality a decent quality it doesn't have to be high quality it just has to be somewhere in the middle. Don't get the lowest quality and grow from there. That way you're not replacing every time you're just adding to because you don't want to buy a $50 2000 watt amp for your sub amp. And then now you need to upgrade. So you need to either get rid of that amp or it's going to be sitting in the, in the garage or, or whatever. So buy quality plan or a good buddy Craig says, plan your work, work your plan. So do just like that. Plan your system out before you buy it. And then make sure, if you want to upgrade, make sure that you're doing it in a smart way so that you're not wasting your time, energy, or money. Well put. I would agree with what Rob just said. And don't sleep on the five channels. Four channels can be a good start, but... If you're pretty sure that you're not going to go for a 2000 watt amp get you a five channel man you can have everything in one amplifier and you'll be ready and I, i'm putting a giant five channel on my truck soon so 
We'll, we'll see I'm what he can do. I'm ready to see that one on the dyno, Rob. Yeah, me too. I'm ready to uh, see you test that one. It's getting close. Sweet. So, what about our Apple podcast reviews? How many do we have now? So, we got 67. We're eight away from giving away the sub. And then more importantly, once we get to 100, you're giving away an amp. So that that's the big prize there that, that people need to shoot for. Especially you're talking about a budget. Hey, what's better than free to start off with? That's right. We won't even make you pay shipping. Yeah. I might just send it COD, though, so you get it and they'll say, UPS Old guy's school. like, <laughs> you owe me 25 <laughs> bucks for shipping. No, we won't do that. As long as you're here in the U.S. and it doesn't cost me a ton of money, we'll ship it to you for free. So I did want to re- read one review that I thought this was funny. This is how dedicated the guys that support us are. The title of this review is, My Dad Made Me Do This. He says, My dad loves this channel and good luck for your channel. So that's awesome. That's <laughs> awesome. Poor we, kid. We, He's like, Dad, I want my phone back. Yeah. <laughs> Just write the review, son. <laughs> write the review. That's right. We've got to get him to 100. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so you, you know, you guys have been cool about that. Thanks for uh, leaving us a review on Apple Podcasts. If you don't understand why important, how, how important that is, you know, Rob and I doing this podcast every week and trying to get Car Audio excited, you know, the community excited and people excited about it. If we can get to a certain point and get spotlighted because of how many reviews we have, this could turn into a pretty big deal. And you know, it's not like that's our ultimate goal, but it would be very cool that uh, we get noticed for this podcast that we're doing. So hopefully yeah. it is helpful for people. Yeah, rising tide lifts all boats. Amen, brother. <laughs> so this week on YouTube, what's going on, Rob? I know you, we were talking earlier about um, Craig had some pretty cool videos here on Old School Car Audio. Yeah. Have you, have you seen any other ones? He done another interview uh, with the owner of a car at the Cartons Auto Sound, which was very cool. Uh, they do some crazy stuff over there in Indonesia, man. They're using some high high end stuff that it's quite crazy for me to see. You know, using a vehicle, and uh, then who else? Uh, Ed from Showtime SPL. He's had a couple of videos up. Uh, I'm trying to think who else. Yeah, while you're thinking, uh, one of the ones Ed put up for Showtime SPL was talking about uh, amplifier ratings, which is you know yeah. something that's close to my heart. But he talks about you know what to look for and how to know that you're getting you know what you're expecting, and it's a, it a great video. And he had a, he had a couple others about some pet peeves that were pretty funny. Um, you know some uh, some of the pet peeves in car audio, so. Check out Showtime SPL. We got some good stuff going on over there. Yeah, and that's, I mean, uh, Quality Mobile Videos tested the new Pioneer amps that came out. So that's cool. I've, I've watched all those. And, you know, as expected, Pioneers usually, they at the very least, do their rated. And most of the time, they do more than that. So, yeah, it's tough to beat for the money. You're getting a, you're getting a good product and you're getting what it says it's supposed to deliver. Yeah, uh, Steve Mead had that. Did you see that fifteen thousand watt B two amplifier? The empty one. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So he <laughs> that got that in. Awesome, that, that was pretty wicked. To see something like that come in. So that's. It's always... Oh, and I've. Have you been following the the build he done for his son's car and and then uh, Jay Bird's car that he done? So yeah, I like those videos. Those, those are actually the videos I like the most that, that Steve does. I do. I like them too. And the one. One of my favorites is the one where the guy brought in the, uh, was it a Chevelle that just oh, had that... the horrible install done that he spent like $5,000 yep. on? That was pew. Oh, and, and you know, people need to, he's got those in playlists so you can check them out. You know, I'll get bored and I'll, I'll go back and, and some of them I hadn't even caught, but I'll go back and rewatch them because, you know, they're just, that that was a very good one. Yeah, I enjoyed that whole series. I think there was like six or seven in that series with the Chevelle. It's definitely worth a watch. Go back and yeah. check those out. So I don't mean to self-promote by any means, 
but I'm closing in on 90,000 subscribers on my Williston Audio Labs channel. Yeah. So close to the 100 I'm reaching. Need that silver. Need that silver play button, man. You deserve oh, it. Oh, man. So a lot of you have been following me for a while. Some of you may not have been following me for that long, but I started my first video uploaded to YouTube was 2009. Well, the first one about car audio was 2009. That was 10 years ago. Now, I removed it because it was so bad. <laughs> and I may re-upload it at, at one point just because you guys can see how bad it was. But I was trying to talk in a radio voice when I uploaded it. And people were like, dude, you sound like you got to go take a dump. And it was just bad. I was talking about a Punch 45 or something. And, yeah, I just had to remove it. So if you go back and look, I think my oldest one is 2010. But anyway, with that said, yeah, I've been doing this for a long time. I have not been consistent until the last about 18 months as far as trying to get a video every week and sometimes two per week. And the difference in the growth with being consistent has just it's helped out a lot. But I kind of feel like I put a lot of work and effort and I've got almost 500 videos up there. I'm excited. When I get to 100K, that's like gold mine for me that's just never yeah, man, thought you, it would get that big you deserve it man it's it's a lot of work and it and you especially you've been trying to put out two videos a week i mean i don't think people realize that the kind of effort that that takes working a day job doing i mean basically you're doing three because we do a, a youtube show and and put it out as audio podcast every week so yeah and helping with homework and and other things that go on it's 90 hours a week easily you know yeah if you add it all up but i'm not complaining because i obviously enjoy doing it but thanks everybody who has subscribed and make sure you hit up rob we're trying to get him built up too yeah. at youtube.com slash high five vega and uh we'll build rob up some and get him to build some more cool isobaric boxes or something yeah maybe we'll do something crazy i don't know i got an 18 we're working on that now there you go Oh. sounds cool well um i think that's about it for this episode make sure you check out youtube.com slash 12v talk if you're listening to this via audio and subscribe to us there we try to go live every wednesday at 8 p.m eastern 7 p.m central we haven't missed one yet i've missed one but rob still went with uh, we had craig on so hopefully every week we'll try to do every week if we miss a week, we're sorry, but we will do our best. So make sure you join us. If you have any show ideas or if you have anybody you want us to interview, uh, hit them up and hit us up at 12vtalk at gmail.com. And, yeah, that's about it. So, Yeah, guys, send send those emails. We respond. We at least read all of them. We respond to most of them. So. Right on. So we're signing out. Until next time. We're out of we here. I cut oh, you short. Quick, man. Yeah. See, I, I was did, expecting I, a long one. I gotta change it up, man. I can't. I can't keep you on the same pace. <laughs> All right, brother. Mead is still in the house. He is still in the house. Oh yeah, man. He he survived the whole time. That's insane. That is insane. Steve, thanks for hanging out in the in the chat room. Yeah, for real. That's cool of you, man. When you get a chance, you can join us here. I might not ever got back into car auto if it wasn't for for uh, Steve going in and basing out at Taco Bell drive through and all that. You know, that yeah. that's some of the first ones when I got back into car auto. I was like, oh man, this is awesome. <laughs> me too. I think I, it was a friend of mine that sent me the Twenty Five to Life series Rockford amps, and he's like, look, they're bringing the Punch Forty Five back out. And you know, that was like 2004, 2000. I think they came out in 2005, but they started putting ads out in 2004 to get people all riled up about it. But that's kind of when I first started looking back into it. Um, but I didn't start watching YouTube stuff until probably 2007 or 8 about car audio that I remember. Yeah. Yeah, it'd be it'd be good to have to have Steve on because you know people don't. Can you imagine the amount of work he puts in doing this stuff every single day? I mean, he runs a, a business outside of, of YouTube. 
Well, so and we know how much work it is just for a little bit of stuff that we do. Yeah, he's he's also usually um, he's at his shop at like four thirty or something in the morning uh, Pacific. Because sometimes I'll forget and I'll send him something in the morning. I'm like, oh man, that's seven o'clock here. And dude responds. He's like awake and already working on stuff. And it's just people that, I mean, granted, you know, you, you're doing what you love to do. You're going to be real passionate about it. And that's cool. But you're still putting in, you know, 15 hour days and it's just insane. But that's it's real cool that you're doing what you want to do. Yeah, that's awesome. I mean, this this show, even though it's so much work for us, it's the best part of my week on Wednesdays. Now, whenever coming to edit the audio on Sunday morning, that's not so fun. But <laughs> this part on the show, it's awesome. I look forward to it every week. And he says he's going to bed in 30 minutes, getting up at 3 a.m. So hold on, 30 minutes from now, Pacific time. Wow. So he goes to bed at like, what? Seven o'clock. Six. What is it? It's nine twenty-two right now. So that's six twenty-two there. So yeah, he goes to bed seven p.m. Yeah, but I heard something about those grandpa naps too. You don't take those during the day, do you? With all that buzzing sound going on. <laughs> How could you, man? <laughs> I don't know. I think all that droning sound would be like, yeah, super, super soothing. All right, anybody got any questions or comments about what we um, said? I know we're being starstruck here with Brother Mead being in the the chat room. Thanks for hanging out with us again, Steve. Let me see here. Yeah, the editing part is for sure. So, you know, it's one thing to make videos by capturing them on your camera or your cell phone, however you do it, but getting the end product getting to youtube rob can attest we've done a show about this before and talked about it but it's one of those things people you cannot understand how much work it is until you actually do it because you yeah. can think oh rob i'm going to send you this um, blah 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 amplifier i want you to test it and make a video and you're like dude you realize that's like five or six hours of my time yeah. No, man, that video, your video is only like five or six minutes. It'll only take you about 15 or 20, right? Exactly. No, it's, <laughs> it's crazy. Like, yeah, I mean, I spent three hours today trying to upload a uh, 4K video. I did upload it, but uh, for some reason, it would only show up in 360p. So I kept waiting and waiting for it to process. Never did. Oh. So I still got to figure that out tonight. I've uploaded three times already. And waited several hours, and it never would go over 360p. So. Oh wow, I've never had that happen. Yeah. Uh, Ed was telling me the other day that he uploaded one that that it would uh, give an error at the very end, and it didn't work. I've been having some problems with Chrome and and setting my thumbnail. It keeps giving me a JSON error or something, so yeah. I have to upload in Firefox to get it um, to get it working right. That that's a pain. YouTube problems. Yep. Oh, it's that Brad talked about uh about buying the Rap Twelves the same time I did, and he did. I think that was at the North Carolina meet, right? Yep. yep. Oh no. Uh, Brad also said he's gonna have demo the Blazer for us. I don't know if we're ready, man. We we can't handle that heavy bass. We're yeah. we're wimps when it comes to that. <laughs> I have to have my my ear protection. I mean, last time. Uh, Derek broke broke the Savard truck because he didn't want to hear it. No, that was before. I didn't even get to listen to it. it wasn't my fault. Yeah, remember, Blame doesn't the remember rain, the truth. Kelly. It remembers what ha what people remember. Yeah, that's true. And nobody <laughs> ever remembers the, the truth. Uh, fifteen hours to edit a fifteen minute video. Uh, Showtime SBL says. Steve says five hours to edit a ten minute video. Yeah, it's yeah. true. Uh, Damien, uh, the head unit that I got from you, yes. So you noticed I teased that this weekend, and I got a lot of. And I wasn't even, I wasn't gonna post it because I was like, I want this to be a surprise. I want this to be a what's in the box Wednesday. I want to open it up and show people because Damien wrapped it up really cool when he gave it to me, uh, or when I I got it from him. But um, 
anyway, I wanted to take it apart and make sure it worked, obviously. And it's it's a little flaky. You know, you got to touch the front sometime to get it to turn on. But I was like, man, I want to get some more details. And I, sometimes I do this. I don't want to make a video and just say, here is a Sony, you know, Sony's first CD player with a tuner built in. I want some supporting articles like specifications and this and this and this. And then the more I get into it, the deeper I get. So I was planning on doing that video the middle of this week, but it just got too deep and I couldn't get all the information I wanted before then. So I'm going to do the video because I think people will like to see that head unit because it's super cool. 1984 is yeah. when it was in, uh, announced. I think it was an 85 model. That thing caught my eye just in the plastic. I was walking. I was like, "Well, hold up." I'm glad hey, Derek, you look at this. saw <laughs> that because that that's the kind of stuff that YouTube is made for for people that have no idea what Sony's first CD player was with a tuner. The CD5 was the first CD player that Sony made. The CD X7 uh, R7 was the first one with a tuner built in, which is what this one is. Yeah. And it's got the vacuum fluorescent display. The lights are they still work. He says it doesn't work with the CD, but I don't even really care. It's just cool to look at. So I'm I'm trying to get some more specs. I did find a Sony brochure that somebody gave me, but it was the model right after that one. It was the R77. So I don't have the R7 information, but I do have a few reviews on it. So, and Damien, I'm an, I'm I told you before, but I'm gonna. Uh, give your website a shout out for that one too hopefully we can get you get you some more uh, work for your awesome artistry so what what was uh last wednesday's video was that the audio control yeah the um the old school one yeah the uh system 90 model 25 yeah. so just to let y'all know derek is putting out the wednesday videos because they'd be quicker videos that he wouldn't do as much work but then you go and watch this video, and me just knowing what it takes to edit these videos and, and get the shots like he got it, this is this is a full this is pretty much a full Derek Wilson audio video here. He just happened to put it out on a Wednesday. It was a ten hour edit. <laughs> I stayed yeah. up until I don't even two a.m. or something one night one work work night uh, finishing it up, and yeah, but. You know how it is, Rob, right? You have plans. Oh, I'm going to do two videos a week, and one of them is going to be a simple, you know, just raw shoot it and have the mic on and talk and do it. And then you get into the editor, and you're like, well, I want to put some this here. I want to do a, a screenshot here. You know, I want to put some text in there. Yeah. It don't take long, man. Or you do like me and, and cut something, or I can't remember what the issue was, but I was in total freak out mode, texting you like, "Hey, have you ever had this problem with uh, Luma Fusion?" That that was an absolute nightmare, but it, it ended up okay. So yeah, it worked out. Oh, UNC's up by nine. Oh, I love it. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> hey, they're they're beast over there. YouTube TV for the win. <laughs> uh, so anybody, yeah, I'm, I'm not leaving everybody hanging here. Anybody else got any questions? I think they're all they're all shook, uh, starstruck that Steve stayed on here. W real quick, while we're waiting for that, I'll tell y'all about the first time uh, Steve called me. So I don't even remember what video I had done. Oh, so I was testing amps way back then with the um oscilloscope and i think i'd bought the dd1 already and i was trying to put videos out testing amps and stuff like that and i got this call one day from sacramento california i'm like who's calling me from sacramento california <laughs> and i answered the phone and it was steve i'm like how, first of all how did he get my number the second of all, i'm like what's up man what you doing calling He's like, oh, man, I watch your videos. I enjoy watching your amp tests. He said, you know, we make those amp dynos now. I was like, yeah, <laughs> those are pretty nice. <laughs> and uh, anyway, so we just we talked a little bit about that and, um, you know, about car audio some and what we thought about YouTube. And we just we talked for, you know, 10, 15, 20 minutes. And and he he told me and he just he was really he was really uplifting with um, 
encouraging, I should say, on what I was doing and uh, encouraging me to, to keep testing the amps and, you know, uh, keep doing what I was doing because he liked what I was doing and just, just thought it was going to, you know, benefit the community. So that was really cool. He He's done it before with the EXO years ago, Cinema 18-inch subwoofer and stuff like that. So I think a lot of times when people see Steve and, you know, he'll he gets comments a lot of times was so the more subscribers you have the more haters you have yep. and i'm sure it's for him it's like the rest of us that when the hate starts it just keeps going and and you're drained from you know all day work and all day working on these videos and then people will point out the most small little yes even on my even on my small scale i know exactly what you're talking about yeah, insignificant crap. So, anyway, the uh, yeah, it just yeah. will really tick off most people, and I I get the same way too. It just drives me crazy, but I try to yeah. ignore them. Well, plus but, you got to you know, Steve's all his videos are he's doing big numbers, so there's people outside. You know, to me, it's a small community, so I I don't get a lot of that. But when you start getting outside. YouTube can be a brutal place, you know, so. Yeah, it really is. But anyway, I just want to get you all that quick, quick story of, uh, of the encouragement that I was given, um, from him. So I appreciate that. Alrighty. Let's see what else. Uh, yeah. And the Husky, I mean, that was, that was so cool too. The rescue of baby the Husky. Yeah, yeah, yep. Base cop. Next week. Oh yeah. You're gonna talk about the audio pipe. Yep. We'll have Mike on next week. So Yeah, how many how many cops do you know with the SPL system? Viewers. That is gonna be the funnest <laughs> part to talk about. It's like yeah. what do your coworkers think about what you do? I mean I've got questions. I'll give away one question. One question. Go ahead. Have you ever pulled anybody over for being loud? <laughs> <laughs> have you got an spl meter in your pocket yeah he he pulled him over he's like hey man what are you running in there <laughs> that's right he's like, hey i can get you i can get you a discount on some yeah. audio pipe <laughs> have you ever considered audio pipe <laughs> uh, he hands him his card yeah no no pressure All right, I'm trying not to miss any any question anybody has, so I'm sorry if you ask one that we haven't addressed yet. Ask it again, because everybody is chatting. Yeah. Yeah, when we get Steve on, I, I like to talk to him about his uh, his distribution blocks and stuff, man, because mm -hmm. that, that really, I mean, that's so smart to have someone that's in the community knows how to install and you know a lot of things he does with that you can tell you can tell it was thought of it wasn't just mass produced and thrown plastic over it right and he's constantly uh evolving it too you right know? yeah it'll be it'll be good having uh having base cop on next week because you think of uh if you're a base guy you know cops are not not your favorite guys most of the time so it would be good to uh subvert that uh mark the ppi uh a 1200 video so that was another one that I was trying to get out and then I wanted to add some more content because I wanted some of the um, uh, brochures and I didn't have a chance to fit it into my, my schedule and then it kind of fell off my radar. But I do have some other art series now. I've got an A600 and an A404 and I was going to show the difference between the dot twos and the standard series but again, you know, I, I yeah. Sorry, I got a little deep in that one and wanted to add a little more than I already had put together, so I kind of put it on the back burner for now. Yeah, I see everyone uh, <laughs> saying Mead's a, a millionaire. 
but uh, I think they failed to recognize that he lives in California. That, yeah. Those taxes there ain't no joke, man. No doubt. They'll turn you from a uh, millionaire to a thousandaire or a thousandaire to a hundredaire. Yeah, that is for sure. Yeah, um, Tony Demore. I've talked with him too about being on. You know, he's um, he's got a tight schedule too, so uh, we'll get him on eventually. We'll get him on when we can. Yeah, he's he's busy all the time. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't even done my taxes yet. I'm I'm not, not wanting to do that, but I guess I'm gonna have to do them pretty soon. <laughs> Yuck. 78 people live. Listen to us blabber. Yeah, you figure they start dropping off by now. Yep, yep, yep. Well, does anybody else have anything? Yeah, guys. Um, You probably understand the dino stuff and how it goes, but, I mean, I could sit here all day and Rob could do the same thing and test all these different amps and just put out videos. But what we're trying to do is do something more than just showing an amp, showing it on the dyno, especially the older ones. I want to talk a little bit about the history and and stuff like that, add a little bit more fluff to it because, um, I don't know, just the straight dyno videos to me get kind of boring. I think a lot of people like to see the numbers, but if you just sit there and watch it, it, it it can get kind of boring. Watch the numbers count up. Got to add some fluff to it. So yeah, well, especially since this is just part time for us. So yeah, if it was our full time job, maybe we would test test a bunch of amps and also do the the stuff we like on the side. Yeah. Wow. That was a bad call, ref. Bad call. That was a charge. <laughs> that was not a block. You didn't even see it. I did see it right there on my <laughs> screen. He said, uh, "Mark said hot rod update." Get anything on that? Yeah, so I think I've got some. Uh, I think I got some trash in the uh, in the in the gas can in the gas uh, tank. So I think we'll have to drop it down, clean it out. Um, yeah, oh, I'm yeah. trying to I'm trying to work out my my plan about what I need to do and what order because there's several things I want to do. I obviously want to get it running right first. And then deal with some of the other little small things I want, and then the interior and all the rest. But for me, right now, it's literally that's something I can't really invest any time in, just because I don't have enough time with trying to get my YouTube channel to 100K and trying to do two videos a week when I can. Yeah, I, I can't do that because I can't get content. I can't the time that it'll take me to do anything. I'm not going to be able to get any content. So. I'm just going to wait and uh, I'm going to find somebody locally or something that can either come over here or I can get it to them and help me out with it. But no updates right now. But I can't wait to design a system for it. I'm excited about that. But for right yeah. now, it's on the burner. It's still here. Oh. It's not going anywhere. Me too. I told you I had the next two weeks off, but uh looks like I get to put a intake manifold gasket on, two knock sensors a oil pan gasket. Oh, and I also get to do two lower ball joints, uh, idle arm, and a pitman arm. So, yeah, it's going to be fun. Yeah, so you got you got your time already taken out. Plus, you want to make some videos, I'm sure. Yeah. Oh, that on, and then the honeydews. Oh, you're off. Why don't you, uh, can you take care of this or that? Okay. Alrighty, folks. I thank you again, everybody, for joining us. <laughs> what are you gonna do with the massive audio subwoofer you have? I'm gonna I'm gonna get EXO over here to lay on top of it, and I'm gonna turn the bass up so I can get a million views. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that'd be awesome. I think uh, he's, he's small enough where he could probably just sit on it like Indian style, and I could just crank it up, and he'd be going. Brr, brr, brr. He's done it before. I know, he's, but not, not yeah. on a massive audio, you know, six thousand watt sub. I know what I know what to do. Get him over here, and have him sit Indian style, and then wall socket that Joker. Yeah, there you go. I mean, hopefully it doesn't. Uh, hopefully you don't kill EXO, because that sounds a little dangerous. 
uh, Cara community has lost a new one yeah. or has lost another good one today. Uh, Mr. Two, because you're going to be in prison. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Big D is going to be locked up for frying EXO yeah. with a wall socket <laughs> video of an app. Oh, oh man. man. That's Ed, crazy. Ed said come help him with his air ride. I, I have a brother-in-law that lives in Pine Grove, so don't tempt me. I might be down there. Philadelphia is only two hours away, less than two hours. All right, geez. I guess we're going to sign out. Thanks, everybody, good for joining us. Yep. And we will uh, uh, meet for NC. Got to get on that. Listen. He'll tell you the week before it happens. No, I'll do better than that. I'll give you at least two weeks notice. Yeah, I know. Because I still got to get my plane ticket. I know. I got to find a place. I, somebody told me the other day of a good place locally, and I, he never gave me the information, so I got to follow it with him. I'm on that. It's on my radar. All right, gentlemen, we're going to stop the stream now. Peace out. Later.